returning to our friend the logic board. I'm going to take out this RAM stick. Now, I may end up having to recap some more of this. I already replaced these two, one that was in backwards from a previous repair job that was done on this and one that was missing entirely. But uh, first, I want to give it another go cleaning with IPA because uh, I think that I can get a little more aggressive with that. So one thing I want to do, since I have this USB microscope now, is take another look at some of the gunk that was on here, especially around like the processor here, the uh, 6830. You can see some of those traces look pretty good, but when you get over to like here, that looks pretty ugly. And that continues up along this side. And I did clean a lot of this off. Um, so it was even worse before, but some of that with just Q-tips and IPA, I couldn't get in to it. So I'm going to try again more aggressively with the toothbrush, but I wanted to document how bad some of that was beforehand. And over here where we have these very shiny, uh, leads, that's where I got rid of that extra solder blob that was there. That was pretty special. And then there's this one pin that's just a little bit not right, but I think it's still connected. When Mac originally got this computer, it uh, was shown by the seller to be working. So things like the analog board that I replaced with the uh, local model instead of the UK variant, that one we knew we were replacing just because it was the wrong voltage. And apparently that one transistor, as we just found out, was bad. And now we've got... Uh, a clearer image on the display even though it's just displaying garbage but the logic board here ostensibly had been working so what I think may have been the case is as ugly as it is the recapping that the previous owner did worked functionally but then some of these other capacitors particularly the ones that weren't replaced they may have started to leak as well and that may be some of the problems we're having now and so here we can see these are the two capacitors that I replaced, the brown ones. Um, now these are not technically the correct type of capacitor. They're not surface mount components. They are through hole, which is why I have them kind of turned into these, the leads are turned into these little loops uh, just to allow them to fit onto the pads there. Um, I have seen, i see if I can find it to link. I'm not sure if I can find it again. I saw another YouTuber do this and it worked well and allowed you to see what was going on a little better if you're not too familiar with the uh, surface mount soldering, which I am not. The one on the left had already been replaced by the previous owner, but it had been installed backwards. So this one is now installed forwards, and the one to the right had been missing entirely, and it has now also been replaced. Now the two behind it, I haven't re-replaced. These are both up spec, they're bigger than they need to be, and they, are symptomatic of the kind of really ugly soldering job that was done by whoever repaired this previously. So you can see the gigantic blobs on there uh, totally covering up the pads. And this one on the right, this one concerns me quite a bit. Because this capacitor is actually, and I don't want to be too rough with this, it's actually a little bit loose and it looks like it is loose because I think that pad focus there we go that pad back there appears to be lifted which is not excellent uh, and I'd really prefer to not have to try and replace anything like that but that's not great that it's lifted like that now if I look at some of these others like if I look at this quadrant of four here one of them's been replaced with the same sort of gigantic blobs of solder just kind of glued on top there. But these other four, these are still appear to be the original ones. They were not replaced. And I suspect some of them may have also leaked. This one's still fairly straight up and down, but the two to its left are rather at an interesting angle there. So I think we had some leakage going from underneath there. So that may have been one of many places where we had that be a problem. It also looks a little ugly around some of these pins as well. And I did already go over this whole board with IPA, but it was just very gently with uh, 
Q-tip, so I'm going to try and redo this with a uh, toothbrush thing. That is... Yeah. Over here, there's fewer capacitors, but they're not great either. So like the C7 here, focus please. C7 is again, gigantic blobs that are coated on top of things. And C3 is the worst. It's a gigantic, way overrated capacitor. And they had to kind of bend it in really awkward way to even get it to fit. So it is just all over the place. We can see that the pin on the left kind of bends over and extends to the far pad. The pin on the right bends back to cover the one closer to us. And it's just really ugly. And like, they're not quite touching each other, but man, they're close. But again, it's possible that as ugly as they are, many of these repairs may have actually been functional because uh, the seller was able to show it working. So it may in fact have been the unreplaced capacitors that continued leaking and caused some of this yellowy, crusty, not entirely cleaned off stuff. So I don't know, but first things first, we're gonna clean all that and then we're gonna see what we can do from there. I have to be kind of gentle around these because that one with the lifted pad, I don't want that to get any worse. While I'm in here, one more thing I want to clean is that one RAM slot that was really corroded. Because I don't think I really got in there before. I'm also going to see if I can do anything more to these traces. They look like they've been pretty eaten away, but maybe we'll be lucky. Yeah, it's still might be about as good as that's going to get. And unlike some I've seen online, the bottom of this board actually looks really, really clean. So, dries very quickly. The 68 of 30 looks a lot better than it did. Let's see if that does anything at all. And as before, I'm really just plugging in the power. I'm perfectly fine with seeing a flashing folder or anything like that because that'd still be progress. Yep, same video garbage as before, so I think some of those will have to be replaced. Um, possibly some of the ones that have not yet been replaced and the one with the lifted pad, which concerns me, but there it is. Okay, we're gonna hope for the best here. Got our handy guide for uh, which capacitors go where. So I already replaced these two. This one at least I think needs to be replaced. This one's probably gonna be in the way so it'll get replaced as well. And these three over here, I think at least one or more of them may have also failed. Uh, I don't know what to think of this stuff over here either. So maybe we're just gonna end up doing all of them. I don't know. We'll see where we go here. So right up here, we've got a 47 and a 10. This shows how I'm adapting these to fit in here by making these little loops to act as pads. And then I will trim off the excess. And that's how I'm adapting these uh, through hole capacitors to work on surface mount pads. We'll see if it's a good idea. I'm not sure. There's another. In retrospect, should I have just tried to force my way through with through, with uh, surface mount capacitors. Uh, yes, I believe I should have. Hindsight's 2020 and all that. I think I'm actually gonna go for the big one first just because it's so darn big. Yep. Get out of there. 
So this capacitor may have been fine even though it was too high of a rating. I mean, you can go up in rating, but it's in my way of getting to this other one with that lifted pad, which I'm much more concerned about. Let's clean up some of the stuff that got over here. So this one concerns me a great deal. Okay, well, let's see what we can get here. Lifted pad is going to kill me. You know, this bead we can probably suck off. So yeah, that's the one right there that I'm concerned about because that pad appears to have been lifted by the previous thing. Trying to get as much of the solder off of there as I can gently. Is this the best way to do this? I have no idea. None at all. So this pad looks good. This one, yeah, not so much. It looks like the pad is at least there for certain definitions of there. Oh, snap. This one on the right's also. Not great. Yeesh. Oh god, that's terrible. That's real bad. It's attached by something, but only barely. Jesus. So astonishingly fragile. I have no idea if the connections are remotely okay. Oh god, the whole thing is shaking still. See, these are solid. This is not, and that worries me a lot. Alright, it's better. But I don't trust it. Or myself. Let's be honest, I don't trust myself. That's what it comes down to. Okay, that one's on relatively okay. Relatively speaking, anyway. So, there's my four that are done. The ones closest to the microscope are the ones I most recently did. This one I think is okay. This one, yeah. it's on solidly now, but because at least one of those pads was lifted ahead of time, and I think now they both are, <laughs> I hope that works. I have concerns though. But over here I know at least, at least this one I think has leaked, and I don't know about these other two, so those are all those are all 10. So the one that's already been the one that's already been replaced, the tall one here was originally a 1 microfarad. I mean granted its replacement now is uh Oh no, it's still 1 microfarad. It's just huge. Okay. But these other 3 are 10. C11, C12 and C14. C15 we might get also, but lower priority. Cool, and then I burned myself, that was great. All right, naturally I did it off camera, but I think I hit upon a technique that will work for getting some of these service mount capacitors off. I'm gonna heat either side alternately after tinning with some fresh solder.
There it goes. And we will move. You. Oh, come on. Get it off of there. No, 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 no. Whatever you're doing, I don't like it. Thank you. Make sure those pads are almost clean. Now, this guy seems to be on pretty solidly, so I'm not going to remove that if I don't have to. I don't like that sound. Well, if that capacitor wasn't bad before, it certainly is now. There we go. So that capacitor just popped as I was getting it off of there. So that one had to add so much heat to it to try and desolder it because I don't have the right equipment for doing surface mount desoldering uh, that it just popped as I was removing it. Now, fortunately, I'm replacing it anyway. Uh, so it can join its other friends here. One of those we think popped previously and one of them I definitely popped as I was removing it. The pads all look very clean though, so I'm happy with that. Yeah, all those pads look quite good actually. Now I just need to adapt these guys to fit on there just like the other ones. Basically a way of trying to make flattened pads on these that I can still get at with the iron. So that's tacked down at least. That one's not the best connection, but I think it'll do. That's better. Okay, I didn't get it on the microscope camera, but I did also improve the uh, other side a little bit as well. Okay, one of many more uh, test power ons now that we've replaced most of the capacitors on the audio side of the board. Let's see if we get anything different now. Nope. Same garbage. Slightly different pattern. Don't know if that's good or bad, but. And again, after reseeding the ROM. Nope. Both RAM chips in. Same thing. Okay, battery ran out on my iPhone, but I found out some other things in my troubleshooting here. Namely, up here in what I'm calling the top right corner of the board, where the, uh, the microphone input and the, uh, the ADB port, up in this corner of the board, there's the one giant capacitor that I've always, one of the previously replaced ones I thought was pretty awkward because it's so big that it had to be tilted over to keep from hitting the frame of the computer as it went inside. One thing I've noticed with this, if I can get a good angle on it, it doesn't look like it's really soldered to anything at all. It's possible it was at one point, but it's gotten so loose that, yeah, that leg I can just move around, which is not what you want. Uh, the one behind it, as ugly as its solder joints are, they do appear to be on the board. So, I think the one more thing I'm going to try and replace tonight is going to be this big guy over here. Which I don't think there is any good angle, really, to see it. Even with the microscope. But we'll do what we can. And I suspect it's going to be pretty easy to at least remove, because only one side is even really attached. Yeah, that came off instantly. Yeah, look what they did to these legs. 
What's even... That doesn't look right at all. I mean, I'm not doing things very correctly, but I'm not doing them that incorrectly. All right, I think I'm going to have to hold the iron left-handed, even though I'm right-handed, just because of the shape of this board. There's no way to really touch any of that in there, is there? Oh, that smells great. Come on. Oh, fuck. These tweezers are actually not ideal for holding this, like, at all. Um... Oh, so close. So close, but so far away. <sighs> I mean, technically it's connected, but that's... fell over. I don't want it to fall over. I also don't want to keep melting the this part of plastic, because that smells awful. I mean, I can tell why they had so much trouble with it, because it really is kind of... A pain. Oh man, stop dropping it too early. Okay, plan B. I think I need slightly longer leads on this one. Take advantage of the fact that I'm using the wrong style of capacitor. And give myself longer leads so that I have a little more distance on it. Okay, so this will be a little silly, but now it's got longer leads, so hopefully I can get in there a little easier. Okay, finally have the one end tacked down. Alright, it's not on very strong, but it is on. So now I can get the other side. That's down. Now I do need to get a little bit more onto here. Because I don't want this joint to let go like it did for the previous guy's repair. There we go. That looks better. So now we got a little lot of solder on that really tough to get to one. But hopefully it won't go anywhere. It's definitely much, much lower profile than the gigantic thing before. So hopefully it won't have to bend in any strange ways to fit into the case. And that's the only other one that looked like it was actively leaking or not fully connected. So, fingers crossed, hopefully? Okay, this may be the last attempt for tonight. Let's see what happens when we boot. Nah, same thing. So something else still wrong with the ROM or the caps or something. Like one of the caps I didn't replace or one of the caps that I did replace but did something wrong with. I don't know. That may be it for tonight. So I've now replaced most of the capacitors on this board. So we replaced one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight for that final one that was loose over there. So that leaves um, two original like OEM capacitors that have not yet been replaced and three of the ones that were replaced by whoever repaired this last. Um, those three include this one which seems solid but is a little uh, just ugly looking. This one which also seems solid but ugly looking and was sticking up so far that it actually was when I started sticking up a little more straight but now it's uh, bent just like the other one here was so it's really just too big because it 
sticks up far higher than other things on that board, which is a problem. Um, and then the one that actually looked like it had been replaced and was solidly attached over here. So since I have all the capacitors remaining and I've already replaced most of them, I think I'm going to go ahead and replace the remaining capacitors, probably starting with the OEM ones because they are the most likely ones to have failed. Again, assuming the seller was not lying to Mac originally when he bought this over a year ago, then it was working before it was shipped over from the UK. The neck of the CRT could have broken in transit and the original capacitors could have uh, failed if they weren't already failed and then started to leak like the one that I saw over here had. But it's relatively unlikely that the already replaced capacitors would have failed in such a short time. They certainly could have, and some of the ones that had like lifted pads or uh, poor connections, um, those are probably worth replacing, but those will probably be the last ones I'd do. First, I'm going to attack these two and pry this one just because it's tall and in the way of getting to those other two. Uh, so yeah, we're going to try those two and hope that actually does it, because uh, other than that, uh, I'm running out of ideas a little bit in terms of what's within my expertise. So iron's already heating up, and I know that out of the capacitors we've got there, those are all going to be those 10 microfarad capacitors, uh, the kind of medium size. So that's what we're going to do. So in my ongoing efforts to get a good shot of what I'm doing, here's how I'm modifying the uh, through-hole capacitors to have these little pads on the bottom. These ones aren't quite flattened out yet. So that gives me a large enough surface area to uh, try to at least flatten down onto those pads while still being able to more easily get the iron in there and maneuver around. There you go. So this one I trimmed a little bit closer, but that might actually be the best one yet. Very flat. I'll fire up the microscope again here, just because that seems to give a nice additional look at things. So I already replaced this uh, larger one. Probably going to take this one out first, even though it feels like it's got a solid connection on there. Um, it's just very tall and in the way of me getting to these two, which are the ones that are OEM that I think might actually um, have failed and need to be replaced. And while I'm over here, honestly, I'm probably going to get this one out also, just because it's so big. And starting to bend. It's so hard to keep this centered. Making videos hard. Well, it's off. Okay. At least on that side. Oh, there we go, that's much better. So these, I've already taken off two of them on this board and discovered they're rather difficult to take off, so I'm gonna freshly tin the iron. And we'll see if we can actually accomplish anything with this guy. Kind of heating both sides. Alternately, without trying to hit any of the plastic parts too much. Am I even holding this in the correct orientation? Maybe. It's a resounding maybe. I know that when I removed the earlier three, one of these popped as I was getting it off, so that is a risk. And from what I see online, they do make double-sided uh, irons for doing this. Some people use two irons at the same time. I'm not that cool. Some of the no heat approaches I've seen online involving like side cutters sounding better and better for these stupid things. Oh, there we go, there we go. Almost got, there it is. Ha ha. All right, so that does work. Uh, it's nerve wracking, it takes a while, but it does work. One more, and this one is even closer to this uh, plastic connector that I don't really want to uh, mess up. I like that. 
So again, got to heat up both this side and this side about evenly without melting this piece of plastic up here. Pretty sure I'm partially melting the plastic at the base of the surface mount capacitor. So, I mean, obviously, these aren't going to be usable again, although they're 20, 30, no, 30 years old. So, so the technique I've been doing with this is I'm not only applying the heat to each side, but I'm also applying very gentle pressure towards the center. I don't know if that's the best way to do it, but it has been working. Pretty sure I'm just melting a whole bunch of the plastic at the base to get to the thing. Starting to get some movement. There we go. Ah, nerve wracking, but it does work. And yeah, that kind of brown plastic base here is totally destroyed, but got the capacitor out. So yeah, that's C10, C7, and C6 all removed, and they all need to be replaced with new 10 microfarad capacitors. And this does let us get in and clean some areas that we really couldn't before as well. So now we need to get all of those in there. And I think that C10 is going to be the first one, again, because it's so up next to this connector. So it's going to be the toughest one. So I'll just work my way away from it. There we go. That's actually a pretty good angle. gigantic bead, but it will do the trick, I think. This is going to be kind of interesting. That's how we want it connected. A little ugly, but it's on there. Oh shit. Whoa, hey. It's hard to keep track of. Oh, come on. Get over there, get over there, get over there, get over there. Get over there. Come on, back up, thank you. There we go. There it goes. Okay, one more capacitor on this side of the board, and this is the one that's so large that it bent over when I placed it back into the uh, computer housing. And that's just because it is an obnoxiously large capacitor that's taller than anything else on the board, which is not what you want, like at all. So we're gonna try and remove that guy as well. The solder sucker does get a pretty good amount off. There's just so much here. They can only go so far. Let me kind of wants to just 
This thing is such a mess. Like just way too much. That gets it off at least. And like with with this being the state of the connections, or like what the pins look like, I'm not even sure how they manage to attach these. Like trying to attach just these stubs where service mount connectors go on, like without even making little pads like that, I'm not sure. I mean, it's no wonder they had to use so much solder. So that is what we want to put on. too bad actually. We've now replaced all but one capacitor. This is the only capacitor that hasn't been replaced. And honestly it looks like it's on there pretty solidly and it's one of the new ones. So everything up in this quadrant has been replaced. They're all now the correctly rated capacitors. Not super super oversized and not physically oversized so they are not sticking up beyond the plane of the board so they should not knock into the chassis of the computer when you slide the logic board in and out which was a problem before. So I'm going to give this one last clean and then put it in and cross the heck out of my fingers. All right, got the one RAM stick and the battery in place. Let's see what we get. Same as before. So like there's the one last capacitor I've not yet replaced. Other than that, it could be some of the other damage to the board from some of that residue, or I don't know, I might be out of my depth at that point. Nothing's getting worse though, so I'm not causing more problems at least. Just for kicks, let's try. No RAM, no battery. It's gotta have a failure mode for that, right? Nope. And of course, because I am an idiot, uh, I realized that as I was putting all these on, I got poor uh, C7 here on backwards. That is the stripe for the negative side, and that is the positive end. I uh, double checked everything else. They all appear to be correct, but C7 is wrong. So I get to redo that one. That's exciting. And while I'm doing that, I might as well replace that uh, C15 way over the other end of the board, which is a one microfarad capacitor. Because why not? I'm in here again. There's Mr. C7. It needs to sit on this way instead. Of course, it's the one in the middle, naturally. Positive goes away, so negative and stripe goes towards me. I think I was being confused by this silk screen indicator, but this is the one that actually is positive for this capacitor. You can tell by the rounded corners on this end versus the square corners on the negative end. Yeah, 
So we need just a little bit more on that joint here. All right, so now that's pointing the correct freaking direction. So let's get the final one out of here. So that disconnected that side rather well, actually. I right, just need to get the other part gone without damaging too many components. Well, I mean, I got it off. I'm feeling like there's gonna be a lot of editing going on here. Positive, negative. Negative is the stripe. Alright, tacked it down. Now this one's a little crooked. That back leg is not quite where it needs to be. There we go. That's much better, actually. Beautiful. That's better. So now we clean it and test it again. And at this point, we have completely recapped the board. That is with every capacitor replaced, so it doesn't look like battery leaking capacitors is directly the cause anymore, so I may need to do some more research, but all the capacitors have been replaced. I've got just a couple more things I'd like to try here uh, before succumbing to the internet hive mind and uh, soaking the whole thing in soapy water. So one of those things is over here on the processor, there's all the gunk that was kind of built up, probably from leaked electrolyte. All this gunk had built up around the pins. Now, I cleaned this several different times, once with uh, IPA and uh, Q-tips, once with a toothbrush, but there's still quite a bit in there that's way in between the pins. Uh, that I just could not get to. So that's why I may at some point want to try actually doing a full board wash just because I can't get in at that and I don't have an ultrasonic cleaner or anything like that. But before I do that, one other thing I want to check is some of the solder joints I did earlier, I may want to double check those. So there's ones like this where, remember, I did those little bent the pin and made like a little loop to sit flat on the surface of the circuit board. This one, its loop is just kind of barely tacked under the blob of solder there. It's still making contact, but it could be better. But more importantly, this larger one over here, it's hard to see, but this one is just barely even touching the blob of solder. The blob of solder is squarely on the pad, but the actual loop of wire is kind of sitting beside it rather than in it. Theoretically, that's making contact, but man, that is not a good solder connection. And the one below it could probably be improved as well. I don't really want to touch this back right one again, because that's the one that had the pads that were trying to lift, and I don't want to push my luck with that. Oh yeah, you can already see that little corner there. Still just a little bit lifted. Ugh. 
But before I go board washing, I do want to try and recheck that solder, solder joint. Lift it a little bit, but it's a more solid connection. Now the one back here is going to be a little trickier. I may actually want to remove the existing solder blob if I can actually get an angle on that. That's going to be the real hard part. Oh, it's more on there. More like it just kind of looped over with the solder. It's not the best job. But I'm really hesitant about disturbing that one to the right of it because I know those traces want to lift something terrible. So we're going to try again. So with just the one ram stick because I don't quite trust any of it. I haven't actually been able to find anything that tells you what the behavior with no RAM installed will be, so I don't know what to look for in that instance, although I'm, I'd kind of like to try it in case the RAM is bad. All right, one more moment of truth. How many of these are we going to have? Same, same, same. So, one thing I'm going to try now is I'm going to try without the rim just to see if it's any different. But beyond that, I think we're ready to wash the board. No rim. Same exact behavior. So, all right, maybe it's time to wash this thing. Because I've seen some recommendations to put it in even like a dishwasher, which sounds a little bit crazy to me, but I may try soaking it in some water that's soapy with dish soap and then let it dry for a good several days before doing anything else. So I washed the board, soaking it in some very lightly soapy water for a little while, and then rinsing it both in plain water and again with pure alcohol, just to make sure that no liquid was left over that couldn't easily evaporate. Then it dried for a few days. All right, see if this does anything. It is still the same result. Okay. So one thing we're going to try is I'm going to take out both of these RAM chips to see if that changes anything. And still no change, even after all that. Sorry if this video was a bit anticlimactic. In part 5, spoiler alert, I will finally end up with a working Mac Classic 2 after taking a slightly different approach. Until then, I don't really have a set schedule for these videos, so subscribe and such if you want to see that when it comes out. Thanks for watching.